you have to really, really save up before you come here because it can be so stressful. And I remember when I first moved here and I was an actress sharing a two bedroom apartment with three people, you need to spend money to make money. And if you have somebody who can take all of that administrative work off of your plate and you can do what you do best, you will make so much more money. And also being a leader is is learning from your team members. Mm -hmm. And we're in the sports and entertainment division and um, I'm just putting together a program to with a sports agent to educate NFL players and NIL people how to build wealth through real estate. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Bianca B, and welcome to the Bianca B Show, where we talk about business, finances, and friendships. I'm super excited about our next guest. She is a real estate broker and the founder of the Kelly Robinson team. I'm super excited to have her on to talk about not only real estate, but owning a business and being an entrepreneur. So how are you, Kelly? I'm great, and I'm so happy to be here, and I'm honored that I'm on your show. Yes. And I know you have a podcast too, and we'll talk about that later. Okay. So kind of tell me a little bit about your journey going into uh, real estate. So I kind of fell into real estate. I was an actress my whole life until my 20s. And I decided after turning down a job uh, on a soap that I didn't want and Um, having a falling out with my manager over it, that I would take a year off and sign a post-dated contract with a different manager. So during that year off, I found real estate and I fell in love with it. And I just never left. I never went back. It was an, it was a complete accident. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny how life takes you places, you know, It it is. I mean, I can relate to that stepping away from entertainment for a year and just like, I can't do this anymore. It's time to do something <laughs> else. But then I always fall back into entertainment, which is crazy. Well, did you have, ever have a moment where you wanted to go back? You know, there were moments, I think, in the beginning when I missed it, like 18 years ago when I started. But now I just live vicariously through my friends who are still in entertainment. And um, I'm a, a part of the sports and entertainment division at my company. So I work with so many people in that industry. And I, I think I, I get what I need from that, you know. That's awesome. And so kind of going to real estate and starting your company, when when did you pivot from being just a broker to now having your own company? So I have my own team at Compass. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started a team around 2011 when I went off on my own after working on two other teams, the beginning of my career. And I just had so much business that I couldn't handle it all myself. So I had to start bringing help on. Mm -hmm. Um, And it wasn't my goal to have a team. I was on two teams previously, and I didn't think that the people on the teams were necessarily treated well. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I will never do that. I will never be this person. Um, But I formed a team and then I promised myself I would never be that person. That's amazing. And, you know, team and and being a leader sometimes is challenging. How do you separate and what advice would you give to entrepreneurs who, you know, may have, it's just them. And then now they're branching off to have a team. What advice can you give to entrepreneurs with that pivot? So I would say the one thing that scared me at first was when I, when I ended up um, getting my first assistant Mm. because I had to pay them a salary and I'm like, but wait, but then I have to spend money and I want to make the money, but you need to spend money to make money. And if you have somebody who can take all of that administrative work off of your plate and you can do what you do best, you will make so much more money that it won't matter. And it's the best thing I ever did. And I've had so much trial and error with different assistants and I have the best director of operations. Now she's a magician, but it's hard. It takes a long time to find the right people. And what are some leadership skills that you learned throughout the process and that you're still learning? I think I'm always learning leadership skills. In my business, you know, the team members really want mentorship. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And I think now I'm finally feeling like I can give that to them after 18 years in the business because I've been through so much, but I still have deals that are that are different than any other deal I've ever done. So, you know, we talk about deals um, all every week. We have a meeting and we talk about what's going on and we kind of brainstorm how to work out problems. And I think that being a leader is a lot of brainstorming and problem solving with your team members. And also being a leader is is learning from your team members and taking corrective criticism from them and being willing to um to listen to what they have to say and their ideas. And, um, you know, being a real estate broker, there's so many brokers in New York City and in these big cities. Were there any uh, challenges that you had to face with the deals that you've made throughout your career? Oh my gosh, every deal, almost every deal is has a challenge to it. And yes, there are tens of thousands of us. It's like a termite infestation. Um, but, you know, and real estate, unfortunately, real estate agents and brokers have a bad stigma for a reason. Yeah. You can literally roll out of jail and get your real estate license. So, you know, I always really focus on listening and being trustworthy and ethical, but deals, man, I mean, there have been so many trials and deals, you know, they're, things seem to be going right. And then all of a sudden somebody throws a wrench in it, or you've got a contract out and all of a sudden somebody comes in and makes a higher offer and Mm -hmm. your contract's not signed yet. So then you got to tell your buyer or, you know, if you're working with a buyer, somebody just came and outbid you and do you want to come up? And it's always a hard conversation to have. And then with sellers, it's a hard conversation when you have to tell them they've got to reduce their price or even, you know, last year, I lost a team member. They quit on me. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason they quit was because I turned down 11 listings. Oh, wow. (laughs) And I did, did that because sellers last year with inflation and interest rates going way up, were still expecting 2021 prices and they weren't getting it. And buyers, there was like this standoff. Mm. And so these sellers, these 11 sellers were really unreasonable. And I said, I had to say to them, look, I hope I'm wrong. And I hope you get your price, but I cannot ethically list your home at this price because at the end of the day, you're going to take less than what you would have if you listed it properly the the first time. And I just, I, I can't, I can't work for you right now. And I said, look, if things don't work out when your exclusive expires with whoever you decide to work with, give me a call. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, I had one team member who freaked out was like, you know, we're not going to have any listings. That's going to make us look like we don't do business. And I was like, do you want to spend the time and money running around and putting blood, sweat, and tears into something that's not going to come to fruition? Mm -hmm. And they left. Um, and, and that was fine. We parted ways on good terms. I always try to do that, but, um, nine of those listings are still on the market. One of them expired without of sale. And the other one, the seller just called me and said, I'm ready to reduce my price. So I was right. Yeah. You trust <laughs> your gut. A lot of people, you know, when did you learn to trust your gut and your intuition with this? I'm still learning. I think a lot of it is data you know, and having the right tools and really being well-read and researching Um, and just being out in the field. I work with so many buyers. So many brokers are focused just on listings. I love working with buyers. I love finding somebody at home, but it makes me a better listing agent because Mm -hmm. I work with buyers and I know what they want at any given time. And you know, your field is kind of similar to entertainment where there's a lot of rejection. (laughs) Oh yeah. How have you dealt with rejection? So growing up as an actress, I was rejected every other day. I mean, you're too fat, you're too skinny, you're too short, you're too tall. Like yeah, somebody told me I was cross-eyed one time. Like, you know, a, a makeup artist was mean to me. It's, it's constant and you have to just pull yourself up by your bootstraps and say exactly what my mother always says. Next. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. One word. Next. Next. I love that. And so, you know, going into real estate and and living in these big cities, I know even for myself, being in entertainment, these big cities are where you have to live. And sometimes with work, it's not consistent. So with maintaining like rent 
you know? So what advice would you give on the entertainment side and people who move to these big cities? What advice would you give to them with finding an apartment or a home that is in a field where you're not making consistent money all the time? Yeah, well, first of all, in New York City, it is the landlords require um, at least 40 times the monthly rent and income. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have consistent income and you can't show that, then you want to have money in the bank saved. So I tell people um, who are looking for a property in, in the entertainment business or even people who are becoming real estate agents with an inconsistent income, right? Because mm -hmm. we're on commission only, have a minimum of six months of living expenses saved up all living expenses and know what your living expenses are probably going to be. Look at what the averages are right now. The average rent in New York city is $5,200 a month. And that's for a very small apartment. So you have to really, really save up before you come here because it can be so stressful. And I remember when I first moved here and I was an actress sharing a two bedroom apartment with three people, we converted the living room into a third bedroom. And I mean, we were on top of each other. And back then we were each paying like $800 a month, which is unheard of now, but um, you know, oh, yeah. I mean, if you can live with roommates and do it at first, you'll save a lot of money. Got it. And so what is next for your business? I know you have the podcast. What is next for you? So we're expanding down to Miami, which I, which is a place that I, yeah, which is a place that I, um, I am in about 50% of the time mm -hmm. and we're in the sports and entertainment division. And, um, I'm just putting together a program to, with a sports agent to, educate NFL players and NIL people how to build wealth through mm -hmm. real estate and create passive income because you never know in that industry if you're going to get injured and your career is going to be over or what have you and you need to have something as a backup plan yeah. so um, that's next uh, Miami and that that's amazing. And I want to kind of go back to the finances. Finances play a huge role in business. What advice would you give to young people who are entrepreneurs or wanting to go into real estate? What advice financially would you give to them? Yeah, again, have, I say a year, have a year's worth of your expenses in the bank at mm -hmm. least because real estate, especially in New York City, you don't close a deal in two weeks. You close a deal in three months. Mm. So you might not get paid for a few months. I would also say join a team first because you'll get more business sooner. Um, you know, if you get a big commission, make sure you get an IRA mm. because we don't have retirement accounts as real estate agents. We're on commission only. Mm. So make sure that you have those types of investment vehicles so that you can someday retire if you want to. That's amazing. And and what advice would you give or which websites would you give to people who are looking to uh, rent and buy? So everybody goes to streeteasy.com, mm -hmm. right? Everybody looks on StreetEasy in New York. In fact, Zillow and Trulia couldn't break into the New York City market because it's such a different animal. So StreetEasy was formed and Street Easy became the go-to place to search for listings. Now, not everything is on Street Easy because real estate agents, especially rentals, have to pay per day to have their rental up there on Street Easy. So if you're looking for a rental, you should go to compass.com, create an account, and you'll get everything that's on the market. Um, and, and that's a great platform to be um looking for rentals and sales is compass.com. It's beautiful. You can keep your notes in one place. It's very high tech. That's amazing. That's good to know. I did not know Street Easy was set up like that. Yes. And Zillow actually purchased Street Easy because they couldn't break into the market. But um, Compass is great. And it's the most high tech tool for looking for properties. And um yeah, I mean that's that's where I would go. I work there, so I have I'm a little biased, but I work there because of the technology partially. That's amazing. And yeah. so uh let's talk about your podcast. 
Uh, talk talk about the, your podcast and what you talk about. So my podcast is called Kelly Minds Her Manners. It's manners with an O like home. So it's a little play on words. Mm -hmm. And I just launched it in, I think, February. And it's mainly about entrepreneurship and real estate with a little bit of a twist. Most of my guests are clients or close friends of mine, um, or, or most of my past guests anyway. And they are entrepreneurs. Uh, a lot of them are in the sports and entertainment industries. And I just like to hear their stories. I mean, I love hearing people's story from childhood to what made them successful yes. and who they are today. That's amazing. And so uh, where can people follow you, your website? So my website is kellyrobinsonnewyork.com. And that's all spelled out. And my um, podcast is on all of the podcast platforms, Kelly Minds Her Manners, and Instagram at Kelly Robinson New York. That's amazing. Make sure you guys follow her. It's your girl, Bianca B. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at It's Bianca B and Bianca B Show. Thank you guys.